Welcome back to Soul Back. This is the R&B Podcast. Kyle here, and I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays if I haven't already. Um, all the listeners and supporters that have checked us out since the top of the year, we thank you for your support. Um, and as usual, I've got Tom and Ed with me. What's going on, guys? What's up, players? Did everybody enjoy their holiday season? Santa was good to us this year. We got a lot of good things to discuss for this podcast, so that's enough for me. <laughs> for sure. I do want to take this time to also thank your guys' family, the Leos, the Bowsers, and the Whitehead Brothers. Um, for <laughs> I hope you guys have the a great Whitehead Christmas, brothers. too. Legends. Legends, indeed. Shout out to Ed. my brothers, the Whitehead Brothers. <laughs> No, the can't... Whitehead brothers are my brothers. Your brothers are Chucky Booker and the gang. Chucky Booker and the gang. I'll take Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we can't forget about your cousin Chris. He gets, uh, he gets a holiday wish as well. Oh, I wish we could forget about cousin Chris. We'll be talking about him later on. I wish we had we live will? footage of the time <laughs> Ed was battling over a turkey leg with cousin Chris at the Thanksgiving dinner table. Oh my god, can you imagine that sing off? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, all right. Well, guys, uh I mean, a lot to talk about this week. Drama continues to fill up this genre we know as R&B, but let's get started with something a little more peaceful. Uh we're talking about 40 something songs from The Dream. He released oh like a triple god. album. Um, who asked for a triple album from The Dream? Ed, it was you, wasn't it, for Christmas? You are a lie if you think I put that on my Christmas list. But I'm sure between the three of us, I was the only sucker who actually sat through all two and a half hours. It was close to three hours of music from that guy. And the interesting it, thing is... <laughs> go ahead, Ed. It was what you'd expect. Here's the thing with these long albums, player. I know that they're the, this is what we do. This is a way to boost and pad streams because we just dump a bunch of music. We don't care about the quality. We get a bunch of people stream it, and that way we inflate our streaming numbers. But overall, and most of you too know, I am no fan of the dream. That is absolutely on record. But across the three, these essentially three albums, all like between 12 and 16 tracks, between them, there are like maybe five or six good songs, actually. If he just, you know, did like a normal artist, we hear Beyonce and these guys, they they record 80 songs and then they pick out the best 15 and there's your album. If he took like the best seven, eight, nine songs from this thing, put it in one project, I'd be like, oh, not a bad listen. But instead, we get this brain dump of garbage, and then you expect the listener to make a playlist. So then you got people saying, oh, it's not bad. I just made a playlist of my favorite songs. I'm not doing the work for you, player. You give me your best of your best, not your trash, and then we got to play pick and choose ourselves. Ugh, I'm frustrated. <laughs> Two interesting Talk. things about it. I noticed the, the um, project didn't even get featured on our site. I'm sure that was intentional. <laughs> Number two, uh, Kyle and I found an article basically showing how little artists are getting for even a million streams. So I feel like this this is going to fade away soon, this whole fad of I'm just putting it up for the streams. I think a million streams only got them. Do you remember what it was, Kyle? Was it like 4,000 4, or 40,000? Something insignificant i'll say that much it's only like 0.001 cents per stream so i feel like artists are going to quickly realize it's not even worth it and Wait, this Tom, bad will you, end you, soon you got this information from uh tyrese's instagram right the post that he made i think so tyrese is not exactly the most credible source but go on come on he knows what he's <laughs> talking about okay I would, but anyway to, yeah to be fair i would give I don't give him credit for much. I would give him the benefit of the doubt on this one. But, like, to Tom's point, I don't know. I feel like that, yes, that overall maybe this fad will go away. But in some ways, maybe it's easier for artists. Maybe it's easier to slap together a bunch of garbage and just release it in one lump and then get some people to make some reaction videos for you on YouTube. Because, you know, everybody's 
the reviewers these days are just kind of like fanboys of artists anyway. So if you can get the dream to retweet you and say thanks, it's like, ah, yes, blah. So you'll easily prostitute yourself out to pop them up. And there you go. You hype it up with minimal effort. Instead of taking a year or so to cultivate your craft, it's more for less. Well, I think the other thing is that with streaming, it actually allows you to go platinum and gold faster than the traditional way. Um, especially if you have a bunch of songs on your project. That's how Chris Brown was able to go double platinum. It's not indicative of you know, where they are in their career in terms of relevancy. I'm not saying Chris Brown's irrelevant, but I don't think he's a double platinum artist at this point. Absolutely so. not. So yeah, but I would got say... Jacquees broasting about how all his platinum success. You think anybody actually purchased that? No. That's stream. I, I will say Chris Brown, to me, has one of the stronger fan bases currently out of any artist. Wouldn't you, would you not say that? No, I definitely agree, and that goes back to my point of right now we're in a culture where the fans are driving the streams. And by fans, I mean internet fans, because internet fans are not the same to me as a usual music fan. An internet stan will do whatever their <laughs> master tells them to do. And the master say, stream all my stuff, keep on, just put it on a loop, they're going to do it. And it's not about the quality or purchasing or my widespread appeal you just get your lemmings to do your hard work Mm Hmm. but serious question guys so chris brown dropped a 40 something album drake drops a 30 something album like every year and the dream just did it this time around is there actually an artist that you want to see drop a 40 something song project because i don't really have the desire to hear that from anybody Nobody. Absolutely nobody. Because, again, I want quality over quantity. I don't. Most of our favorite albums, the artists didn't go in the studio and make 13 songs, or at least they probably made 30 or something. And then they gave us their best. We aren't getting the best anymore. We're just getting everything, the jump. And we're in this weird market where we just want everything. Like, again, it's kind of an offshoot of social media where... We feel like we have to be privy to everybody's personal life, so we want to know everything. Everything you ever recorded, give it to me. So that's what they do. We had that well, be somebody a... leaked all those Beyonce songs on Spotify a few weeks ago, and most of those were cast off. So I had no, I, no business being on an album, but people ate it up because you asked Beyonce. Hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of afraid to ask Tom that same question because I know Music Soul Child, Feel the Real, Grammy nominated, was a double album. Tom, do you have more desire to hear uh, double albums from Music Soul Child? Listen, Feel the Real got a four star out of five star rating on one of the most reputable reviewer sites out there. Case closed. <laughs> Not that I can't agree, disagree with that. But, I mean, again, there's a difference. There's a difference between doing a double album, which I don't even think was still as long. They were still shorter than these albums we're discussing. I'm okay with double albums, but, but I need to make sure that there's still quality and consistency and not just a dump of tracks or half of them ended up on the cutting room floor or should have been on the cutting room floor. You know, like, once a project surpasses, I'd even say, like, 12 to 15 songs these days, you know there's going to be a lot of bad songs on there. Like, that's just the norm. So you have to cringe almost when you hear how many songs some of these projects are having. Especially when it comes from an artist who is quite known for being consistent anyway, like a dream. Because I remember back in the day when you would get like those Japanese bonus songs or those Walmart bonus songs. Those usually were pretty good. But, you know, every so often it would be pretty trash. But you're looking at, instead of having one bonus song, you're looking at having like 30. So I don't think the <laughs> odds are with you if you're, uh, if you're going off that. Yeah, but we no. know that even like back then, how much more care was put in and time was put into making the music. It's so yeah. much different now. We we know that. Everything is microwave now, and it's it's a whole different time. No, 100%. So, guys, um, to save you from the Dreams 40-something song album, 
JoJo has gone out and released her two uh, first, her first and second album. Both were released on Blackground, and obviously you can't find them on Spotify due to legal issues and contractual issues that she had with Blackground. And it's well documented, but the fact that she went out out of her own way with her own money to record or re-record her first two albums, that's pretty cool. That was a brilliant move. I feel like that's like the smartest move of 2018. I loved it. And I actually went back and listened to the album. I listened to the first one. I, I didn't re-listen to the re-recorded second one. Because I wanted to see how different it sounded. And I know a lot of our listeners are huge JoJo fans. I have always respected her voice. But I can't say that I was like yassing about JoJo in 2000. She was a little bit out of my market by then. But I really liked it. She, I wondered if it would... And I know, like, maybe fans who have, like, listened to that first album to death can probably tell the differences and different inflections and the maturity from now and compared to then. But I thought it was a good translation from what I remember. It was very, very smart move and a great way to get around black ground stupidity. I, th- I wish more artists would do creative stuff like that and find different ways to promote their music. And, you know, I applaud her for this. And... My wife, who is actually, I figured out what, is a big JoJo fan, who knew, <laughs> went back and listened to them, and she really liked them, so that's got to count for something. <laughs> yes. Mm. Well, Ed, as somebody who has listened to those JoJo albums to death, like you said, man, I got to say, the production on this on this new stuff, it was kind of cheap. Now, I will give her credit and give her a pass because she did pay for it out of her own pocket, and... I think it was produced by like her, just her team. So it wasn't, you know, professionally done. But she went out of her own way, out of her own pocket to mix, master, and produce the whole thing. So I can't really be too mad. But it makes me wonder, guys. We see JoJo. She went out, re-recorded her first two albums. Would you like to see that from your favorite artist? Like, what if Keith Sweat went back and re-recorded his? Almost classic debut album, Ed. Would you be excited? Almost classic. First of all, it is a classic. Get your mind right. (laughs) Well, absolutely not. Like, I I feel like that's a great way to get around legalities. But to me, albums are kind of moments in time. So if I want to listen to Make It Last Forever, I want to hear 1987 Keith. If I want to listen to Get Up On It or whatever, I want to hear 1992 Keith. I feel like albums are benchmarks in different parts of our our lifetimes, and you can hear an artist mature and grow vocally. If you have an artist singing 2008 vocals over a 1987 song, that's cool in a live show, but I don't know if I necessarily want that on an album, so to speak. Now, if something happened and they wiped all the music off the face of the earth, and this was the only way we could get it, okay, cool. But otherwise... Nah, let the classics be. I would love to, Ed, man, I would love to hear Keith Sweat re-record his Grammy-nominated album. Well, he and (laughs) your boy Music Soul Child can get together and compare Grammys and talk about who really got some classics. Hey, man. (laughs) Tom, you know you were wrong for that one, but I love it. I know. (laughs) Alright, so, shout out to JoJo, that was a brilliant idea. I don't know if I want to see it from anybody else, but, because I'll be honest, if one of my favorites, or not one of my favorites, one of your favorites, guys, because my, my, my favorites are still young and vibrant, and they can still sing a little. Yours oh, are really? In the retirement home, but if, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but here's the thing, I'm afraid if they go back and re-record some of their older stuff, it might not sound as good. I, I remember when Boys mm-hmm. to Men did it a couple of years ago. Um, they did all their hits, and uh, it didn't really sound that good. Uh, same with TLC. They did it as well. But JoJo seems to be the one that pulled it off better than anyone so far. So, shout-outs to her. Um, let's talk about our favorite songs of 2018, um, as well as favorite albums, if you guys want. Um, we posted our year-end countdown, 2018. And number one was Tony Braxton, As Long As I Live. We all love that song. Absolutely loved it. That I just a lot of times when we go in these countdowns, for those who don't know, we go in and we kind of present our favorite songs and we put them out there and we vote together, kind of as a group. 
And every year, there's always a song that I know that's like, okay, I know this is going to be number one. And once again, this year, I knew this one was going to be number one. It was pretty uh, consensus on that one, I'd say. And uh, I'm just glad it didn't end up with some crazy song that, like an album cut of an artist I don't even like. So, well done, guys. Well, we almost got Remember the that. year that Tiana <laughs> Taylor was like in the top ten and everybody was like, how did this happen? That was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was classic. That song was good, though. Yeah, it was. That was uh, that was Request, I think, off her debut. But um, this list was sort of interesting, too. I think we started to see a mixture of our favorite artists as well as some new ones. I know LMA was in our top ten. Your boy Jacquee said was in our top ten. So yeah, I think. Well, I can think, I give some background real quick? You know, uh, when we started this, we didn't even know if we were going to be able to have one hundred songs, and right. we were able to scrape it together. And I used the word scrape because it wasn't easy to make this list. And I would say this is easily the weakest list we've had since we started doing this. I don't know if you guys agree. Um, I would agree. I I really like the top ten. And I do think that it's probably the most obscure list because I think even listeners to this podcast would look at the top 100 and be like, I probably haven't heard 50% of the songs on this list. And we're talking hardcore fans. So I I don't know if I would call it the weakest, but it definitely is a list that we really had to dig deep to get some decent music on. Yeah, I think for me, the top five or so were pretty obvious. And I think we all got it right. I think it was like near the middle of the uh, of the list. It was kind of hard to separate what what should be number thirty eight and what should be like number fifty five. Right. Um, but but I that's why I love these lists, though, because a lot of times you'll have our, our listeners that'll tune in and be like, you know, this is why we got so much love on social media, and thank y'all for that for saying a lot of people got these lists wrong this year, but you guys got it right or you know, you introduced me to so many new songs that I didn't know about, or I didn't know so-and-so came back with this. Because if you're being force-fed what the radio gives you, or what social media gives you, or what the stands give you, a lot of times you're missing some of these cuts. And this gave us an opportunity to highlight some artists that even we don't even have time to talk about on the podcast. So, even though it wasn't necessarily the most star-studded list, I still stand by the quality. So if you haven't checked it out, go to either Soul and Stereo, go to You Know I Got Soul, got the whole list of 100, and listen to them. Because if we shouted it out, even if it's not the quality of a 1997 or a 2004, it's still worth your time. Yep. Now, guys, what's your fa- what's your proud moment making this list? Or something that stands out to you? Because for me, when I made this list and then I looked at the final... Um, product, it was kind of surprising to me that, because we all love Justin Timberlake, we've been fans of him for a long time now, but all his songs from the Man of the Woods album, they're pretty far back on our on our list, and I know all three of us, we didn't necessarily love the album, uh, I may have liked it a little more than you two, but it wasn't a bad album, but to see that all his songs ended up in that 40s range, that kind of just tells you that album wasn't really memorable in retrospect. And I know I read an article uh, the other day that said that the Man of the Woods album was rated the worst pop album of the year, which is kind of like crazy, but that's what stood out to me. I, yeah, it's funny that those songs landed there. And I saw that article, and I think the article was stupid. If that album is by far his weakest album. But worst album of the year, I can name 50 albums worse than that. Pop albums, too. There were pop albums worse than that album. But, you know, it's even a bad Justin is okay. In a stronger year, those songs wouldn't have made it. But those songs weren't offensive. I think it's fine. To me, one of the biggest kind of wins of the year was, I'm sure Tom will stick me up on this one. So a girl, Anna Moore, she really came out of nowhere and we big up her many times on the podcast and on our various sites. But I really do think that she's had some of the best work of the year. So I was glad to see her. I know at least one of her songs made the top 20. It's like 12 or 13. So good for her for that. And I think it just proves that 
there is still an opportunity for younger artists in this kind of unstable landscape to slide in the back door and make a name for themselves. The thing I, I think about the most is um, like which artists from like who our core artists are, are really leading the charge of in this time when so many of the 90s artists and early 2000s are fading away, we keep seeing the same names popping up on these lists that are leading the charge with good music. I mean, Tony Braxton's been on a bunch of lists, you know, for her work with Babyface and now this. Tamia keeps popping up for her work. You know, um, Raheem Devon is constantly on here. Marsha yep. Ambrosius. I mean, these artists, we keep repeating. Miguel is always on here. Maya's been on her a few years in a row. And then there's artists who are constantly absent, either not, not making music or the music they're making is not that good. So to me... I can clearly see who keeps making the quality music and leading the charge of R&B and who is, like, fading to the background. So that's what I look at. Mm. Well, I do want to give a shout-out to two people, actually, before we move on from this. Uh, one is one is Jazz from Drew Hill, who was ecstatic and threw a parade when he found out he was on the list. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great yeah. song, though. That was a great song. Um, and that was and a great that- moment because it's it's great that someone recognized him and he deserved it. Yeah, right, of course. And uh, the second shout out I want to give is to our boy Zeppelin, who was a Play a Please recipient last week. Guys, I don't know if he was trolling or not. I think he was, but Ed he claims that this year for R and B was the best it's ever been since 1998. Your thoughts? Now, either your boy Zeppelin has been dipping in that eggnog with Tom pretty hard. <laughs> Or he is a master troll. Because to say that this year was better than 98, dude must have just been born in 2013. <laughs> because that's ridiculous. This last year was better than this year. Stop playing. Yes, please just keep it moving and don't give that comment any more attention. Gosh. <laughs> he's going to time Zeppelin. out with Barry. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the king of R. Wait, is it my turn? Is is it oh, my right, turn it is to? Your turn. Uh, Sorry, Ed, Tom had a special time. feature that I forgot about. <laughs> Ed, are you ready for this? I'm about as ready as I'm ever going to be. We have been doing these lists now for I think five or six years. Okay. Right. How many songs? Can, and I made Kyle do this too. But how many songs from? From the past five, six years that made our top five, top ten, can you name right now? How many songs from the top ten can I name? Like, huh. any songs that made our top five or top ten in the past five years. Can you remember any? On try the spot? Getting him to name, yo, try getting him to name Bro. the number one song of each year. I don't think I, I don't think I If you could even it. name the number one song. I and my probably... point is not to test your memory. It's kind of to show how unmemorable this genre has been <laughs> no and i definitely agree with you that's one of those if i sat and thought about it probably but even last year like what the heck was the ne- it, i had to go back and look remember. at last year and i'm looking like we wow last year was daily and jill scott until the pain is gone believe it or not yes <laughs> and it's crazy because as great as that song was i would have never thought of that if I sat here and stared in space for 30 minutes, yeah. I probably could come up with three songs. But you're and right, because it, it, but I can yeah. tell you the best songs of 97, like nothing. 98, like nothing. Because those years were just so memorable. And, and to be fair, also, it's a lot harder to do that now because along with those years, we think about what was the most prevalent in mainstream. What was the most prevalent mainstream song this year? Booed Up. So if you ask me that next year, I might be like, oh, no one song was Booed Up. And we're like, no, that was on the list two years ago. So it's harder, but I get your point, player. Unfortunately, though the music that we listen to is great, it's not having that lasting impact. I talk about that a lot in my reviews, too. That an album can be technically good, but it just doesn't have the lasting impact. And that kind of affects the scores. And people, oh, you're hating. You're making up reasons to hate. No, if you can think of this album six months from now and remember all the tracks on it, okay. But if you can't, it's going to take a hit. Mm. The homie has a point. 
I'll tell you the song just for everyone's memory. Two years ago yes. was Silk, Love for You to Like Me. We all love that one. We did, yep. but I forgot about it. Num- uh, 2015 was Jasmine Sullivan, Mascara. Oh, Great I love that one. Forgot about it. 2014, Michael Jackson, Love Never Felt So Good. I really forgot about that. <laughs> and 2013, Justin Timberlake and Jay-Z, Suit and Tie. I love that song, but I would never guess that. And yeah. for all those people who hit us up saying we forgot about Boot Up on our list, she was number 34 last year when it came out in its rightful <laughs> year. Damn, it so, was 34 Ed, last you year. Failed if, the it, challenge. if it came out this year, it'd probably be number one, guys. <clears throat> we'll see. And I, I actually saw some people saying that like we should have re-ranked it because it was popular this year. Look, player, we're not giving hall passes for this stuff. If an album, if a song drops in 2018 and you don't hear it till 2019, that's on you. That's not on us. So no, if it, we rank it when it drops, it doesn't matter when you heard it or when Twitter tells you it's hot. We t- we rank it in that year. So no, we don't re-rank stuff because all of a sudden it's popular. That's cheer. Mm-hmm. Tom, you're done with your feature now. Yeah, so Ed got zero out of 30. <laughs> well, I'm sure Kyle did too, so I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, but, Tom, it's, ti- it's time for some fun stuff. It's time for the Kings of oh, R&B discussion, a- part two. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Now my blood pressure is going to go through the roof. Me- By Can- the way, someone someone said we should be considered the Kings of R&B. Did you see that on Twitter? I didn't, but I agree. Someone Who's tweeted that to us. Man or gentleman that said that. I gotta look that up. Someone actually tweeted that to us. <laughs> I well, I agree. What a smart tweeter. <laughs> yes, run with. It. Uh, okay, so kings of R and B discussion. I will summarize this, and then I'll let you guys take take it from there. So, as you guys oh, know, boy. I guess three weeks ago, Jacquees made. The most outrageous statement, or it wasn't really too outrageous, but he said he was the king of R&B for his generation. Twitter no, took that. No, it's outrageous. Social media took that and, you know, and started talking about it from their own perspective and thought he was saying that he was the king of R&B, period, which wasn't what he was saying, but still ridiculous regardless. Uh, it created a huge discussion on social media. Everyone chimed in. From my generation to, uh, it was pretty much just my generation, but in more recent weeks, the OGs have started to chime in. Bobby Brown was interviewed by TMZ and they asked him who he thought was king and he said it was him. And if it's not him, then it's probably Usher. But the best TMZ interview that happened was when they interviewed (laughs) Ed's favorite artist, Keith Sweat. Tom, can you break down what went on in this interview? First of all, I'm impressed that the TMZ videographer guy even recognized Keith Sweat and was at a Keith Sweat show. That's that deserves a round of applause. Oh, well, you oh oh, speak before <laughs> I break your jaw, please. Uh, it was kind of very awkward, and then they told him what happened, and then Jacques ran up on him out of nowhere. Where did he even come from? <laughs> it's like it came up, and then all of a sudden, it's like, poof, he was just there. It was so weird. Why would those two be in the same building? I have no idea. And then all of a sudden, Jacques made his claim on camera. Keith's only response he could muster at the time was, I'm still getting that bag. And then Jacques was gone. <laughs> First of all, let me give a accurate retelling of what actually <laughs> happened. Because what Tom said is some old hating stuff. So here's what <laughs> happened. TMZ was backstage at one of the best live shows they could ever be at, a Keith Sweat show. They're backstage. They want to talk to the headliner, the main event, the dude who's making it happen. So they run up on dude who has a legacy of R&B OG history. Out of the sewer like a freaking Ninja Turtle, before he can (laughs) even get the words out of his mouth, up comes this Jacquees thing who is just some mutant offspring of Lil Wayne. They say, Keith, have you heard about this King of R&B discussion? Before Keith says anything, this gremlin jumps in front of the camera, chucking and jiving, 
talks all over Keith. Keith ain't said nothing. Talks all over him. Talking about, I'm the king. Y'all should be talking to me. Blah, blah, blah. Disrespectful little cockroach. Keith, if you look in the background, is trying his best not to introduce this dude to his pimp hand. So he's trying to calm and be the OG, the respectful veteran that this little monster does not deserve. So in effort to be funny and to be engaging and to make light of the situation, he's like, all right, I'm trying to get that bag because he's at his show. He's trying to get paid. Can't blame him. Jacquees still talks all over top of him. So Keith at this point, just like his handlers push him into his room because he knows it's about to go down. Keith is a 50-year-old man from Harlem that still dresses like a pimp. You know he gets down. <laughs> so he pushes him in the room. That's part one. That's only the beginning of this story. After the fact, we have an interview with Tigger, Keith, Jacquees, and Lord knows for some reason Tank wearing some Aretha Franklin fur. I don't know where he got his grandma's <laughs> fur from. So they have a conversation. Keith basically calls out Jacquees for being an idiot and demands an apology. Jacquees, knowing that he's a moron, standing between three grown men, he says, okay, I'm sorry, blah, 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 blah. So we good. Keith then tries again to be the adult and says, you know, back in the days of the real legends, we talking about the Luthers, we talking about the Donnie Hathaways, we talking about the Teddy Peas. Nobody talked about being a king because, and then, again, interrupted about a little thing who's like, well, they didn't have internet. Keith looks at the camera and is like, I can't talk to this little boy no more. <laughs> so we're talking about a brother who has has to have 10 or 11 number one hits, 30 million records sold. I'm not talking 30 million records stream, 30 million records sold, cash money, real life classics. And he's debating kings of R&B with some dude who's only known for making remakes of other people's songs. This dude's the king of karaoke versus the king of R&B. I cannot deal with your generation. Wow. Great now, story. Now, Tom, can you uh, look up the wiki facts? Who had the higher uh, song on our 2018 Songs of the Year list, Jaquise or Keith? Oh, that's your guys' fault. That is not my fault. I've tried to. I only. I only voted for this song because of Darnell Jones. Darnell, <laughs> that's a Darnell with my Jones accent. <laughs> oh man! But listen, I have always said that Jacquees' album was actually okay. I had no problem with the dude and decided running his mouth like an idiot and decided to parade in front of the cameras. He's an okay artist that has potential to be better. But then he decides to get off on disrespecting real legends. Come on now. I like However, the 23 song. In, in a stunning turn of events, we thought Keith was getting that bag, and a week later he was getting sued for not paying his tax money. <laughs> Look, player, I don't know why these celebrities, from Keith to Ron Isley to Wesley Snipes, the fat Joe. Why do y'all always try to out pimp Uncle Sam? He is the biggest pimp. Pay him your money or you will go to jail. I love you, Keith, but I ain't got no bail money for you, dog. <laughs> I hope you got that bag because you're going to need it. Man. <laughs> it's getting well, rough out here. Well, he's looking rough out here, too, Tom. Oh, man. What? <laughs> Come on. It looks like Keith hasn't sweat hasn't slept in like weeks. He's looking a little well, busted out there, Ed. Player, if you listen to my interview with him, you can tell that he don't get very much sleep. Cause ooh, <laughs> man. Um, on the contrary, though, I was just talking to Tom about this. Didn't Darnell Jones strike gold with Jaquees, especially after all this controversy? Because if you realize it, he doesn't necessarily have to put out music anymore. He can just continue writing for Jacquees, especially with the buzz that he's getting. I mean, 23 was a great song, but I'm pretty sure that J uh, Donnell can make more money writing for Jacquees than putting out his own music. I don't know about that. It's not like he's writing songs for freaking Mariah Carey. Writing songs for Jacquees? If that's the best thing you got on your resume, you need to hit the studio, homie. Uh, I'll... I, 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 I just want new 
Darnell Jones music. That's it. We got to oh, say it with a southern uh, accent every time. Uh, I don't understand how people misspelling something has to do with a southern accent. <laughs> Well, a lot of things don't make sense in the South, so we'll just run with it. We'll take it. Well, that's the only thing that you Northerners gave us the uh, the thing that is Cardi B. So you get oh, all man. of my yeah, you get all of my rage for that because I blame that thing on you. Oh man, Kyle, Kyle, can we talk about that discussion you created yesterday? Uh, which discussion? About reading a book instead of listening to R&B. That was like some of the most R&B discussion we had in a while. <laughs> I'm going to save even, that for Even our legends were chiming in on I'm that. I'm going to save that for our player, please. Oh, man. Yeah, I All missed right. this one. I got to hear this. But uh, I did want to point right. out that uh, Jaquise, this was actually going to be a player, please, but we're going to leave him alone because we've slandered him enough. But Jaquise... Uh, there's an online petition going on right now uh, telling from people telling Jaquees to stop covering songs. I think it's at like 40,000 at this point. Did you guys sign up? It should. Well, I'm going to do it right out of this podcast. It should be at 400,000. <laughs> Have you seen his covers? This dude is like, well, obviously he's 23 from his song. The dude moves around like his joints are made of peanut brittle. His voice is all dry, like he just ate a mouthful of crackers. Stop singing stuff and looking all rickety and raggedy. It's like a <laughs> Pinocchio puppet out there. What? <laughs> Pinocchio? I thought he was looking like young Quavo out there. Well, he's looking like him too, and that is not a compliment. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. Uh, I did read in an article that he got arrested at the airport for singing. So, the guy likes to sing. Let him sing. That's not true. That can't be. I want it to be true. It's probably a lie, but I want it to be true because it's so wonderful. <laughs> Anyways, Tom, I got to call you out. Oh, no. What did I do? So remember when this whole... What Jacquees haven't you done? Remember when this whole <laughs> Jacquees debacle was going on and my generation started chiming in. They all ran to Instagram and posted their videos. Jay Holiday's obviously being the most notable. I know uh-huh. you were low key. You were low key shading them and saying that they had no reason to be uh, in that discussion. Well, you done pissed them off along with Jaquees. They've all now formed together like Voltron to go on the Millennium Tour. We're talking B2K, Pretty Ricky. Lloyd, Mario, Bobby Valentino, as well as Chingy and the Yin Yang twins for Ed's demographic. But they're all together Ugh. now. What do you have to say now, Tom? I mean, let's see the, the ticket sales results and then we'll talk. <laughs> oh, what do you That'll be about? a heavy debate. <laughs> Come on. Well, see, players, here's my thing about this tour, which honestly I don't have any beef about, but it just shows the generational stuff. Because I remember a year or so ago when all the 90s artists got together and started touring and everybody from that generation was like, oh, who cares? Who wants to see all these old people get back together? No one cares. No one's going to go. They're forgotten. And now that the artists of that generation have gotten together, everybody's yassing and making memes. You always support your generation. So it's funny that now that the 2000, the mid-2000s gang is starting to get left behind for the Jacquees and LMAs of the world. Now they're uniting. Look, player, support who you like, but sooner or later, you will be as old and crusty as we are listening to your Marion 21 album. That's a great um, album. Can, can I quote <laughs> my wife, who, is rel- who relatively grew up on these type of artists? She yep. said things, and this is like a snapshot of your of how your generation acts. Oh, did this person fall off? Is he even still around, etc.? She even she's not going to this. And her first concert was a B two K concert. Your Ooh. your generation is a bunch of haters, man. They don't support. They say, oh, he's not hot anymore. He's whack. He fell off. They don't even acknowledge the hits. Well, I they think- don't. Well, I think what's beautiful about this tour is that it's not about what's current. It's literally nostalgia, and it scares me to say that it makes me feel old that this is going to be my first, like, old-school Jimmy Jam concert. 
But I'm telling you, there's Jimmy people... Jam concert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, there's people that have an emotional attachment to people like Bow Wow and B2K. They're gonna be at this concert. Oh, I Bow agree, wow. and that's oh my gosh, and I agree, and that's why I was saying a year or two ago when everyone was laughing about Montel Jordan and TLC, it's the same thing. They'll five years from now they'll be. Ranting and raving about, man, I can't wait to go to the Jacque show. And they dug up LMA out of the ground and brought her back. And, man, I can't <laughs> wait to see. Like, that's just how it is. That's how generations turn over. So that's why our my generation gets so freaking annoyed with this current generation and yours, Kyle. When they're on their, oh, someone's old and someone fell off. Like, that previous generation didn't pave the way. Just respect them and stop pulling jacquises and shucking and jiving in front of the camera. That's all we saying. Mm-hmm. So, Tom, will you be attending this concert? Uh, uh pretty. I mean, there's, there's little chance of that happening. <laughs> I'll be honest. There's there's no, there's no chance. Oh man! If oh, they man. invite me, if they invite me to cover it and interview everyone, then maybe. Just for our boys, Bobby V and Jay Holiday. Other than that, I'm out. Uh, Jay Holiday's not part of this tour. Wait, what? How'd that? Yeah, something, yeah. Tells, something tells me Jay Holiday might just storm the stage anyway and just yep. start singing. <laughs> yep. And then on the other side of, of the stage is going to be B5 coming out just dancing and not even singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, B5. Yeah, B5 was pissed <laughs> that they weren't on this tour. They were pissed. Well, then maybe they could be they, they could be backup dancers for B2K during this tour. I mean, oh. I know. Does anybody even remember? Does your generation remember any B5 songs? I only remember, like, one. I only honestly remember Why their cover of that Troop song or the, Michael Jack- or the Jackson 5 song. Exactly. All they are is, like, your version of Jacquees. They sing another people's song. Hmm. Serious question for you, Kyle, though. Is there anyone else you feel realistically deserve to be in this? Um, I know I'm some almost thinking say- like someone so, someone like a like a Nivea. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, well, this is an all-guy concert, so I think you can't really include the females. Oh, yeah. But if we're talking just guys, um, I know some people threw Sammy in there. Mm, I mean, I know Sammy was part of a group initially, but they weren't really that big either. Uh, Jay Holiday yeah, is probably wanna... the only one that I can really think of, unless you count like Marcus mm. Houston as well. Now, now Marcus Houston was the one that I was a little surprised, but I don't know if they still have B two K beef, so that's why I didn't make a big yeah. fuss about that. Yeah. But that's about it. Sammy was a little too. I don't know. He was hot at the beginning of the decade and then vanished for two. I feel like he was too in and out. Yeah. I'm trying to think of anybody else. Um, yeah, honestly, Bow Wow is probably the only one. Unless you count, like, Chris, Trey, and Neo, but I don't think they need to be going no, down the No, that's a different tour. generation, so, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, won't, they don't fit into this. Yeah. I mean, they all came out around the same time, but, you know, they, they had some hits after 2010, so... Yeah, I, you I feel like they're more 2010. Time. Yeah. Um, now, can we get into the Play of Please Awards? Yes. I'm sure we can. And I'm scared about this one. So, I promise you there will be no Jacquees or Keith Sweat because we've talked about them extensively on this podcast already. But we've got a, I've got a couple for you guys. Um, the first one, of course, being, um... And it pains me to say this because I'm going to hopefully see him at the Millennium Tour. But at this point, I'm not too sure. Pleasure P allegedly got arrested for a DUI for driving under the influence of alcohol. And Tom, you showed us the article. What did he say when he got to the police station? He said, call Shaq. I don't even know why or what's going on. but Like Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah, Sha- Shaquille O'Neal. And... Uh, <laughs> It seemed to have worked because he posted a video later that night from the strip club. So, props to Shaq for helping out. <laughs> I didn't know your boy was cool with Shaq. Is Shaq his dad? Why is he saying call Shaq? I mean, didn't Shaq used to be a cop down there or something? I don't know. 
Oh that yes, works. I remember the Shaq caught the cop error. I forgot about that. Yeah. Hmm. We might have to try that as well. <laughs> well it when worked. We, we might have to try that as well when we're partying in Miami. Call Shaq. He'll he'll bail us. And the yeah, winners sure in this whole work. situation. The winners of this whole situation were the strippers who got the benefit of his dollars. Well, you know that's right. They always winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. You girl Cardi B. Ugh. Are we giving Cardi B a play a please award, Ed? Oh, please. R.I.P. to your mentions if you do that. All right. Well, I'm glad to see Offset and Cardi back together. Oh, my Ugh. God. All right. That R. R.I.P. to you for that garbage. Real love prevails. Oh. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, so bad news for you, Ed. I know the holidays are are over, but uh, your cousin Chris might be going back to jail. That's good news. He uh, no, it's not. He owns a pet monkey, and apparently that's illegal. Well, first of all, player, it was an exotic monkey. I saw the picture of his daughter holding this. I thought it was a like a teddy bear because she had it wrapped up like ET in the in the basket. And I was like, what is that thing? It was a freaking monkey. But he's got some exotic monkey that is illegal to have because those things are like endangered species. What does Keith... I will not Keith. What does Chris Brown, even a monkey, he can't take care of himself half the time. Oh, jeez. I mean, I hope hopefully Chris gets it together. Or, uh, man, can you imagine going to jail over a monkey? I would just give up the monkey. <laughs> but maybe his daughter doesn't want to give up the monkey. He would rather keep the monkey and make daddy go to jail. <laughs> oh, damn. I, oh, oh, Tom, those it's are the sacrifices you'll have while. to make when you. Uh, those are the sacrifices you'll have to make when you have a kid too. Oh, I'll just get God. a stuffed. Get ready, Tom. I'll get a stuffed monkey and try to convince him it's real. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what we used to do. Like, just give him a teddy bear. <laughs> How you got to give him a real bear? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> And then uh, finally, the play a please, and this one came from uh, one of our f- good friends on the site, Lachelle Wallace, and uh, this really put things in perspective for me in terms of the state of R&B. She said she stopped listening to R&B because of how atrocious it's been this year, and instead of listening to new R&B, she's picked up reading. If that isn't the saddest <laughs> thing you've ever heard, I don't know what is. She's picked up reading? That means it sounded like that was the first time she ever read before. I mean, I mean, it got people talking, though. Yeah, uh, I, mean, yeah, so uh, I got to uh, hear about the, the response to this, because apparently it was wild. Our friend Jermaine Dupree chimed in. What did JD uh, say? Uh, well, in Vogue responded they put up the uh crying face like laughing crying i got a kick out of that one specifically <laughs> i got into a fight with dj soul child over this oh uh, god what did what did soul child do now because he he's fight, he's lurking in the comments dissing people who don't know about new music as usual like don't be a snob uh our boy tim kelly from tim and bob chimed in Jermaine Dupree said change is going to come. Uh, I don't know. Was there any other highlights, Kyle? Um, well, it's interesting. JD said change was going to come, and I clicked on his story, and he's working with Dondria. I don't know if change is necessarily going to happen from a Dondria project, but I mean, it's cool that JD is sticking to his word, and he's actually making R&B, so good on him for that. Uh, the oh. other thing that stood out, oh, Zeppelin. Let Zeppelin Dondria comments. live. Good God. Oh, I love oh, Dondria. God. What does Zeppelin say? Dondria, listen, <laughs> Dondria's single "You're the One" is gonna be my wedding song. I've t- I told Tom this back in like 2011, and it still stands true to this day. And when we told her about that, she uh, just had like a blank uh, <laughs> response, like didn't even know what to say. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Why, she, why she had nothing to say? Not even thanks. It was like an awkward laugh in silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. Uh, but Zeppelin, like she couldn't even believe know. someone would do that. Yeah, I know that's hilarious. But uh, Zeppelin 
his comments. Well, I, we talked about it earlier. He was actually really happy about this year, and I think he was begging for a Play a Please award. We're not going to give him that honor. Yep. So, you don't get one, Zeppelin. And then this guy, Mike Gucci, who I know is a follower of our stuff, challenged us to create an R&B tour and do our part to bring it all back. Which sounds great on paper, but is very unrealistic because of the time and money it would take to pull that off, let alone exactly. relying on fans to show up to make it a success. So, that would be great. We'd love to do something like that, but there's, I mean, we're not quitting our jobs and putting our money behind artists. Like, uh, I don't even know who would put on this tour, but it could go bad really quickly, and I have no Look, money. Play, uh- I got a mortgage. I ain't relying on y'all can't even show up for the podcast on time and you expect me to show up on <laughs> tour to pay my bills? You have lost it. You're not going to have me on the street because Jay Holiday showed up late. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm trying to think. What could I possibly afford with the money I make, the money you make, and the money Ed makes? I think we might have like Brian Angel as our headline act. Uh, <laughs> I know that sounds well, bad. Brian up, Angel... <laughs> I know at that least messed. has like he has a big online following, so we can get if we can get his stands to come, we'll be all right. All right, <laughs> and that's no shade. We just don't make that much money to be booking Usher, who now has braids. Ed, that <laughs> looks kind of cool. Usher forever. I swear, Usher forgets that he's Usher's older than me, so Usher's got to be like 40, 41 or something. And dudes swear that he's still twenty three. Hey, man, you're only as young as you feel, and he feels 18, apparently. <laughs> apparently. I, I think he feels 23. <laughs> oh, <laughs> stop Everyone it. feels 23. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, the last thing I want to mention before we get out of here, uh, did you guys see Barack Obama's playlist that he oh. releases every year? Thank you for reminding me. This is a well, play of please, right? Th- this isn't a play of please. Wait, wait a minute. Are you giving Barack a play of please? <laughs> He's giving Barack, the president. It, it, yes, the president of the United States is getting a play of please award for his music selection. Is that allowed? Oh, my gosh. Listen here, player. I know that his selection was a little mainstream, and I probably like two songs on his list. But the thing is, we can go with his list, or we can go with who's sitting in the office now and get the Taylor Swift Earth, Wind, and Fire song and some Ted Nugent racist garbage. I will deal with Cardi B if that's what we got to do. Leave Listen, President Ed, you're, Barack alone. You're forgetting that he's part of the problem with music. He's enabling this crappy music to be in the mainstream. So now he's part of the problem. Oh, I've lost all he's respect. A, he's what are enabling you? the... <laughs> Good. What are you expecting Barack to pick some obscure Donnell Jones song from 1996? Yes, yeah, he actually, wants freaking yes. Don't Change and all. Man, stop. Well, he's <laughs> acting like he's Usher. He's no youngin', and he's picking Cardi B songs. Come on, Barack, well, you gotta do better. The one positive thing I'll take out of that whole playlist is uh, it's more verification that my girl, her, will win Grammy of the uh, al- album of the year because her's on that playlist. Now, so well, here's the way I took this list. He didn't listen to any music in 2018 that came out, and then major labels paid him to put the stuff on his list. That's my speculation. Oh come on! I press- guarantee you that no major label paid him to do that. But he might have some minions that was like, "Hey, here are the five songs I listen to. Go ahead and fill it out with whatever's popular with the kids." And they're like, right. "Okay, Cardi B." That oh, I can what? see happening. Why no. couldn't he pick a Peebo Bryson? I mean, that would have seemed realistic. Why does he have to listen? I mean, Peebo would have been on my list. But why is he? Why does he have to put Peebo? Because he's that's his up generation. There age. That's his generation. Listen, Barack, if you're listening out there, hit us up. We'll give you some good music to listen to, so your 2019 list is way better. Barack, no, Barack, if wow. you're listening, please send your shooters to Tom's house and let's be <laughs> done with it. Man. Because and, uh, this guy has overstepped his boundaries. And Brock, if you want to play Marvel Ultimate Alliance with us when it comes out, feel free to do that as well. <laughs> we we do need a fourth player. He's still we, for we, we need a fourth guy. That's true. It might be Brock. Or it might be Barry. <laughs> Although, I, I, at this rate, I might choose Barry. I, Barry's list is looking better than Brock. So Barry's in, Brock is out. 
Oh wow. my gosh! Unfortunately, Tom might be right with that one. Wow! I can't believe you're shading the president because he didn't put one of those auto tuned A Marie songs on his list or whatever it was you like. Not auto tuned A Marie. <laughs> at least to me, like choose his generation, choose his style that he actually likes. Well, maybe he likes Cardi. I mean, if he does, that's too bad for him. But just because he's <laughs> up there in age doesn't mean he's sitting around listening to the best of Brian McKnight. Well, I'm not saying he's sipping prune juice and listening to Dino Jones' first album. I'm saying he should at least listen to the artists from his generation who still release stuff. Well, Tom, if it makes you feel better, we can tweet him right now and send him a link to our uh, year-end countdown. You should. Let's do it. Also, tweet All him right. a link to this podcast and do hashtag play a please ward. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, How did things get this bad? That's oh, bad. my God. What have we done? I know. R&B, man. That, uh... All right, Ed, what's going on with soulandstereo.com? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do something to clean this mess up that Tom has made. We talked about Play a Please Award, so go to soulandstereo.com because, yes, it is time for the annual official Play a Please Awards of Soul and Stereo, the worst moments of 2018, the six worst offenders of the year. Kyle was a little upset that I didn't get KC riding a human being eating chicken on the list, but that's because Jacquees made me throw the list in disarray. But check that out, the six most offensive moments of 2018 plus as you said earlier we've got the 100 r&b songs list featured there as well as the top 50 albums of 2018 all on soul and stereo awesome stuff and tom i guess you and i will continue pissing off instagram with our comments <laughs> i just had a vision can you imagine if we all quit our quit our jobs and hired casey and jojo to headline our tour and next thing you know, Casey is riding around on someone's shoulders and ended up kicking some woman in the head in the audience and they shut the whole tour down and we all had no jobs and no money. Oh, man. These are things I you have to worry about. These are, this is something that probably could happen. Trust me. <laughs> but I anyway, I mean, I'm a little concerned, guys, because... Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, we would still have JoJo to headline the uh, tour. Sing it from the background on the stage? Towel on head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Uh, I'm a little concerned, guys, because I don't even know of any albums that are scheduled to come out or are coming out, unless you guys could fill me in. Well, no, the only thing I've heard is that the usual brand is coming and Kelly Price going to drop, but other than that, nothing. I heard people keep telling me Drew Hill, but... Aside from them working in the studio, there's no guarantee of an album. No, I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I think they're coming out, though. They've uh, they've talked about it more than once. And uh, there's clips of them actually recording. And there's songs that uh, Troy Taylor has previewed on his Instagram. So I think that's coming. But aside from Drew Hill, I can't really think of anyone. Do you guys think artists like John B., Donnell Jones, and Genuine are afraid to put out new music? I don't know if I'd say afraid. Maybe they don't see the point. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, that definitely is like. What John B thinks, from my interpretation. Yeah. So, so. Um, oh, we are getting new music, Soul Child next year. I just don't know when. It's like Christmas next year, like five or six times, hopefully. Five or six times. What? Five or six times. All right. <laughs> You're being no. wishful, but we'll see. <laughs> I don't think anyone really wants five or six, but two, one or two might be good. We'll see. Um, just give me one that, and make it 16 tracks, and that's it. Like, I don't ask for much. Just give me your best, and then let me marinate on that for a year and go away. Stop giving me four hours of garbage. Mm. Other than that, not much is going on with the site. Just trying to scrape together some posts there's not much to post lately so yeah we'll do our best well guys uh, i hope everyone has a happy new year and we'll see you next year uh a lot to look forward to next year including the millennium tour i'm gonna go into my closet now and dig up my throwback jerseys my name belts um 
maybe maybe borrow some of like one of my former classmates like fat farms baby fat i don't think i'm even allowed to wear <laughs> oh baby my fat God. but uh i gotta fat dig farm. all that up my timberland boots gotta do the whole thing and i gotta get ready for this tour and i hope i see all of you guys there as well you won't see me but have fun <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i'll see you guys next week thanks for listening and we are out of here happy new Peace. year players <laughs>